Right, people's just a super quick one today. Uh, we're going to have a look at the Biodynamic Custom One Pro. This is a really interesting, if slightly flawed design, uh, but it's got some really interesting features on it. As you can see, this pair is very scabby. This is actually a pre-release pair, which I got my hands on before they came out to have a have a test because we were going to start stocking these. And I've used them ever since. I've used them for DJing in the garden. I've used them in the spray booth, which is where they've got paint and other stuff on them. And the pads are slowly starting to disintegrate now. I think these must be seven years old. I've used them nearly every day. They've been totally abused. Um, in any situation where I'm a bit worried about damaging some headphones, I just use these because they'll just survive anything. But yeah, so I'll just take the head pad off. As you can see, it's got the normal Beardynamic spring steel headband. Uh, these are some very old ones. You see, you've got some Phillips screws here. These would all be T10 these days. Beardynamic have changed over. But as I said, these are old pre-release jobbies. Uh, they had a detachable cable, which was a nice feature because at the time they were just doing the 770, 990s, that kind of stuff that didn't have detachable cable. So I think this was the first one, first Beardynamic headphone that had detachable cable, which was nice. It wasn't this cable, this is just one I've had on like long-term test because I work for a company that makes cables. First thing you'll notice is these little switches. It's pretty cool. So, uh, on most closed back headphones like the DT770, they've got a little hole here somewhere which is essentially a bass port designed to tune the enclosure. Enlarging that hole gives you more bass, shrinking that hole gives you less bass. And on the Custom One Pro, they had a little switch where you could do a tiny weeny little hole, a medium sized hole, or a big hole. So you could essentially add more bass to your personal preference. Also, when you're DJing, because I was DJing with these at one point, you can shut that, you get better isolation. So you can't hear what's going on as much, you can hear the mix better. So nice, really cool little feature that I would like to see on more closed back headphones where you can just do just quick and easy tuning to your own personal taste, because sound is a very personal thing. And also on some tracks, you want that dirty, dirty bass, you crack it open. Other tracks, you, you don't want it so much, you, you can't be there. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, there's one other, yeah. So let's just get this ear cap off. So this is just a, a T6, sorry. It's supposed to be quick, I'm ranting. Let's just get this off. So, so these are the offending pads that I've got to change today because it's just getting to the point where they're starting to flake off and it's, it's just not cool anymore. Yeah, very sorry for all the ear fungus and schmoo on these, but uh, hey, they're, they're heavily used headphones. So the idea behind these was that you could undo these little Allen key jobbies. This would come off and underneath you've got a plate under there that you could put various designs or your own logo, stuff like that. So the idea was that you could customize your headphones super easily. You just stick your own name plate in there or logoed what's it and, uh, and away you go. So that was a, that was a nice feature. This is a nice feature. I'll show you another one. This is cool. And they should have this on all of the, the, the range of the Bear Dynamic headphones. Super simple, this notch just here. It's just super simple, they've just taken a notch out and what that does is if you've got to change for new pads, you hook the pad into that notch, twist, and it goes on. How super simple is that? So yeah, so if they put that on the 990s and the 770s, everyone could change their pads much easier. And how, how hard is it to stick a notch in there? They'd, even, they'd already invented it, they'd come up with the idea, and then they just haven't added that notch to the enclosures on the other ones. So, Beardynamic, if you're listening, next time you have to remake the moulds for the 770s, stick a, you know, when your moulds wear out and you have to replace them, make one with a little notch. So under here you've got the 32 32 ohm driver, which isn't my favourite. Uh, I should probably change these to an 80 or something, but the idea is that these would work off your phone and laptop and stuff like that, so they're, they're nice and easy to drive. Uh, on, the, on my ones, as you can see, I've added a bit of weight in there. And again, they're the older drivers with the solder on tabs, the newer ones will have the circuit boards in. Here, this is where the actual uh, base port mechanism is. So we just quickly whip that out. And you can just see it's got holes with mesh in the back there to stop dust and dirt from getting inside. And this was probably their biggest design flaw inside had a big flat area here, which meant that the sound bounced off the back of the driver and straight back through without being diffused. And uh, yeah, that made them sound a bit boxy, like you could hear the enclosure more on these than you could on the 770, which has got a curved inside, which causes the reflection to bounce off. Uh, different different directions. So yeah, so I think having a flat back there was a bad idea. They probably, should, I've added some damping material in here. Yeah, they should have added some foam or something behind it just to kind of absorb some of that sound bouncing around. So yeah, interesting design. Probably the first one that I'd seen with the Beardynamic that I'd seen with a detachable cable back in the day. Another feature I forgot to mention is originally it used to have a little rubber thing on the end of this pole that would 
push on the back of the driver giving the driver more support which would again help with the base but they were kind of trying to hit the dj market with this it just didn't sell as well as i thought they uh, i don't think it sold as well as they thought it was going to but yeah really really nice features really interesting design features in that one yeah so anyway uh if you're interested in this kind of thing seeing what headphones look like inside how they're designed uh what makes them good what makes them bad just subscribe there's always more stuff coming out we're trying try, i'm trying to do one a week uh basically yeah uh, but yeah if you've got any questions stick them in the thing it'd be great if you could like and subscribe if you know anyone who's interested in this kind of thing if you're on, on any forums where they uh mess around with headphones feel free to post any of our videos uh you know it's still just trying to build a little community of uh like-minded peoples anyway um great hanging out and uh, i'm gonna go and crack on with some other stuff